नमस्कार टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विथ सुपराडिन ग्लैंड एंड नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज अप्लाइड एनाटॉमी ऑफ किडनी इन विच फर्स्ट इज सुपराडिन ग्लैंड सुपराडिन ग्लैंड दीज आर टू स्मॉल ग्लैंड इन रिलेशन विथ अपर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ किडनी बोथ राइट एंड लेफ्ट किडनी नाउ दीज ग्लैंड शोज डिस्टिंक्ट पार्ट्स कॉर्टेक्स आउटर एंड मेडुला इनर now these two glands are covered by capsules inner true capsule and outer one is false capsule inner true capsule it is formed by condensation of fibrous stroma of suprarenal gland and outer false capsule it is formed by renal fascia renal fascia after covering kidney it joins with each other in relation with upper end of kidney then it splits again to cover these suprarenal glands now these capsule again after joining with each other in relation with upper end of these suprarenal glands go towards diaphragm and show the attachment there and forming suspensory ligament for this suprarenal glands now there are two glands right and left suprarenal gland right and left suprarenal gland having size and shape different right sided suprarenal gland is pyramidal in shape but left suprarenal gland it is semi lunar in shape now these glands height of these near about 15 mm breadth is 30 mm and thickness is about 10 mm if you try to find out weight of this gland it is near about 5 g in weight now we will see one by one these two glands right and left suprarenal gland first one is right suprarenal gland now it is pyramidal in shape it shows base apex anterior surface posterior surface then two borders lateral border and medial border now this right suprarenal gland we will see relations in relation with this apex there is exit of this right suprarenal vein from near this uh, apex or this anterior surface of this gland now base this base it is lower part and it is shows in relation with or, or it lies in relation with upper part of this right kidney now anterior surface of this right suprarenal gland this anterior surface it is divided into two parts by one line or you can say this anterior border of present on this or this anterior surface as this anterior surface is divided into two parts medial and lateral part near is upper part there is exit of this right suprarenal vein now medial part of this anterior surface it comes in relation with inferior vena cava now lateral part of this anterior surface again it is divided into two parts upper and lower upper part comes in relation with this bare area of liver and lower part it comes in relation with lower margin of this inferior coronary ligament or simply inferior coronary ligament in relation with liver now posterior surface of this right suprarenal gland this surface it comes in relation with this diaphragm and this diaphragm deep to this diaphragm there is presence of right costo diaphragmatic recess of pleura this is about right suprarenal gland now next one is left suprarenal gland left suprarenal gland it is semi lunar in shape it shows upper end lower end anterior surface posterior surface lateral border and medial border now this lower end it is rounded and upper end it is sharp and these two ends now lower end is rounded upper end is slightly sharp it shows two surfaces anterior surface and posterior surface 
anterior surface of this left suprarenal gland it comes in relation with in its upper part it comes in relation with this cardiac and of posterior surface of stomach which lies in relation with lesser sac now just below this this anterior surface comes in relation with this body of pancreas also in relation with this anterior surface there is presence of splenic artery near lower part or can say lower end of this left suprarenal gland there is exit of left suprarenal vein now this posterior surface of this left suprarenal posterior surface it is again divided into two parts lateral and medial now this lateral part of this left suprarenal gland comes in relation with this anterior surface and upper end of this left kidney then this medial part of posterior surface it comes in relation with left cross of diaphragm next one here now these are two glands right and left suprarenal gland in between these two gland there is presence of some structure which structure from right to left on right side there is presence of right inferior phrenic artery right celiac ganglion then cisterna cilia formation of thoracic duct then aorta now towards left side there is presence of left cross of diaphragm left inferior phrenic artery and left celiac ganglion these are structures in between these two suprarenal glands now we'll see structure of these glands as already mentioned each suprarenal gland shows outer cortex inner medulla now i want to add one point here that during fetal life the suprarenal gland is more as compared to size of this kidney now this is slowly afterwards this suprarenal gland decreases in size and it will become 1/30 of this size of kidney in adults but in infant it will form 1/3 as compared to size of this kidney here now structures cortex and medulla these two parts these are structurally developmentally and functionally different how we'll see now here this cortex and medulla it will show some specific structures having specific cells first cortex it is divided into three parts zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata and zona reticularis first is zona glomerulosa second layer is zona fasciculata and third layer is zona reticularis now these three layers and inside this there is next medulla now what is arrangement of cell or structures of cells in these layers of this suprarenal gland zona glomerulosa having polyhedral cells and these cells in first layer of this cortex are arranged into arch columns and in between these arch column there is presence of capillaries and sinusoids then next layer is zona fasciculata this zona fasciculata again polyhedral cells having specific arrangement or can say vertical cords straight cords now in between these cord there is presence of sinusoids and capillaries now deep layer of this cortex is zona reticularis again cells are polyhedral in shape but these are haphazardly arranged there is single collections or you can say there is collections of cells but in between these collections of cell there is presence of sinusoids and capillaries now hormones secreted by these three layers zona glomerulosa will secrete mineralocorticoids and this mineralocorticoids what is function of this mainly aldosterone 
it will control secretion of sodium from this nephrons of kidney how it there is exchange mechanism for sodium it will exchange this sodium with potassium and hydrogen and this is function you can say sodium reabsorption is a function of this mineralocorticoids present in zona glomerulosa second layer zona fasciculata which secretions come from this these are glucocorticoids mainly cortisol this cortisol or glucocorticoids control carbohydrate and protein metabolism mainly conversion of proteins to carbohydrate also it will do some additional functions like it will control population of lymphocytes it will this decrease speed of migration of fibrocytes and therefore it will delay wound healing also it will control this autoimmune reactions especially allergic reactions now this is about secretion coming from zona fasciculata now third one is zona reticularis this is innermost layer of cortex of the suprarenal gland it will secrete glucocorticoids and some sex hormones like androgens and estrogens these androgens and estrogens present or secreted from this zona reticularis it will determine or it will in human body it will find out or it will help in development of secondary sexual characters you know functions of glucocorticoids same as secretions coming from this zona fasciculata innermost layer is medulla and it will secrete mainly epinephrine and norepinephrine cells here again in medulla arrangement of cells there are special types of cells and these are having special staining properties and cells of this medulla will stain with potassium bichromate brown staining will take place therefore cells of the this layer medulla is known as chromaffin cells and coloring reaction is known as chromaffin reaction this is about cells present in medulla and its secretions here after this we'll go to this blood supply in arterial supply suprarenal glands are supplied by three arteries superior suprarenal artery middle suprarenal artery and inferior suprarenal artery superior suprarenal artery it is a branch coming from inferior phrenic artery middle suprarenal artery it is a branch coming from aorta and inferior suprarenal artery it is a branch coming from renal artery venous drainage in venous drainage there are two veins right and left suprarenal vein right suprarenal vein as it comes out near this apex of right suprarenal gland it will drain into inferior vena cava left suprarenal vein it will comes out of this suprarenal gland near its lower end and it will drain into left renal vein this is about arterial supply and venous drainage next is lymphatic drainage lymph vessels from this gland will go to lateral aortic group of lymph nodes then next is nerve supply nerve supply mainly this medulla it will come from cilia plexus from which roots t8 to l1 segments t8 to l1 and this nerve supply will mainly go to this medulla of this suprarenal gland which will control the secretion from this medulla then we'll cover this applied aspect applied in applied part first addison's disease what is addison's disease when there is decreased secretion of mineralocorticoids what will be effect of this decreased secretion of mineralocorticoids there is decrease reabsorption of sodium from this nephron of kidney and therefore there is presence of hypotension 
pigmentation of skin muscular weakness and weight loss now next cones syndrome what is cones syndrome in this there is hypertrophy of cortex and increased secretion of mineralocorticoids again now reverse exact opposite to decrease secretion now here there is increased secretion of mineralocorticoids therefore there is presence of hypertension and hypokalemia because of this increased secretion of this mineralocorticoids there is loss of potassium from body now cushing syndrome cushing syndrome in this what happens there is increased secretion of glucocorticoids what will be effect of this increased secretion of glucocorticoids there will be truncal obesity hypertension and hirsutism in female because of this increased secretion of glucocorticoids next is adrenogenital syndrome this is because of increased secretion of androgens what happens what will be effect of this there is muscularization of female and precocious puberty in male now next pheochromocytoma this is a tumor mainly in relation with medulla of the suprarenal gland what will be the effect increase secretion from this medulla and there is now uncontrolled hypertension this is about is applied anatomy of suprarenal gland now after this we will cover applied anatomy of kidney in relation with this applied part of kidney first transplant of kidney in this transplant of kidney there is selection patient selection donor selection and after blood group matching there is transplant of kidney is possible next is lithotripsy what is lithotripsy this is extra corporeal short wave therapy and this is used for breaking of this stone present in relation with ureter or pelvis of kidney this shock wave will break stones in relation with this pelvis or ureter into small segments or into small particles and there there is therefore these particles can go outside body with the help of urine this is procedure is known as lithotripsy extra corporeal shock wave therapy next applied part of this kidney is renal artery stenosis sometimes when is stenosis of this renal artery what will be the effect it will cause hypertension because of secretions of hormones from this kidney which will control blood pressure next is renal failure in this renal failure sometimes what happens because of this less blood supply to the tubules of kidney or you can say poor oxygenation of tubules there is effect of this poor oxygenation lowered blood supply to this tubules of kidney there is acidosis and hyperkalemia why because this potassium and hydrogen ions cannot go outside in relation with this exchange ion metabolism in exchange with this sodium therefore this will persist inside body and it will cause acidosis and hyperkalemia now renal failure effect of this is renal failure what what is the reason of what is reason for this renal failure for acute renal failure and chronic renal failure for acute renal failure decreased blood supply to this kidney there may be hypovolemic shock or hypotension this may be sudden and because of this sudden decreased blood supply to this tubules of kidney there is acidosis 
hyperkalemia and decrease output of this urine this is acute procedure and this is acute renal failure next is chronic renal failure this is, it is again slow procedure slowly there is decrease in blood supply to these tubules and what will happen you know now what will be effect slowly there is increase acidosis and increase hyperkalemia now next condition in relation with this diabetes insipidus this diabetes insipidus what will happen polydipsia polyuria means increase in urine production and again repeatedly increase in thirst and this is mainly due to adh absence anti diuretic hormone absence which will control this reabsorption of urine in kidney distal convoluted tubule of kidney therefore if there is no hormone this adh hormone what will be the effect of this production of large urine because of there is no reabsorption of urine from distal convoluted tubules of kidney and in this there is production of large urine again there is thirst and this is a continuous process but there is no relation of this condition with this diabetes only name is diabetes insipidus but this is mainly because of this hormone adh no direct relations in between diabetes mellitus this is about this urine production next condition is acute nephritic syndrome in this acute nephritic syndrome what will happen there is decrease flow in this capillaries glomerular capillaries because of increase and in size of cells and number of cells in glomerular capillaries as there is increase in size and number of cells in this capillaries endothelial cells what will happen decrease blood flow to this glomerulus and <clears throat> lumen get block lumen of this glomerulus get completely vessels capillaries get completely block and what will be the effect effect it will cause hypertension hematuria means blood in this urine edema and increased level of urea because blood cannot reach in this relation with the glomerulus therefore filtration is not possible urea will get raised or increase level of this urea next is nephrotic syndrome simple name for this is nephrotic syndrome is glomerular basement membrane effect or defect glomerular glomerular basement membrane defect now this glomerular basement membrane it is defective in some diseases and what will happen this abnormal glomerular basement membrane will allow this protein to go out therefore there is proteinuria as protein is going out albumin is going out what will happen hypoalbuminemia because liver can not cope up with this increase loss of this protein from blood and final effect of this is edema sometimes in children this glomerular basement membrane defect in the form of podocyte cells present in relation with this membrane is defective now this podocytic cells in children will cause again same thing loss of protein edema in urine loss of protein in urine and edema but in children after specific age this podocytic cells will naturally get repaired and there is reverse process means loss of this protein will stop and edema will recover Uh, in relation with kidney there may be some developmental defect which developmental defect polycystic kidney what is polycystic kidney when excretory and collecting part of this kidney are not communicated with each other there is formation of cyst in kidney this is polycystic kidney means multiple cyst in relation with kidney present these are developmental pancake kidney means completely fused kidney these two kidneys are fused in the middle line rounded kidney 
हॉर्स शू किडनी लोअर पोल ऑफ टू किडनीज आर कनेक्टेड विथ ईच अदर देन समटाइम्स वन किडनी मे बी ऑप्शन मीन्स ओनली वन किडनी प्रेजेंट इन बॉडी दिस मे बी अगेन डेवलपमेंटल Sometimes instead of two kidneys, three kidneys may be present because of again developmental reason. Ureteric bud will divide on one side, and it will form two kidneys on one side and single kidney on other side. Means multiple kidneys. These are some developmental defects. Again, in relation with this ascent of kidney, there may be kidney present in pelvis because of non-ascent of this kidney. next is renal angle what is renal angle it is an angle in between lower border of 12th rib and outer margin of this erector spinae muscle this one is renal angle if you press in relation with this renal angle there is tenderness and to to elicit this tenderness renal angle is used in relation with this kidney if sometimes you want to approach kidney any operative procedure then in relation with this 12th rib you have to remove this 12th rib for this easy approach to this kidney but there may be chances of this opening of pleural sac because instead of 12th rib sometimes 12th rib may be absent and instead of 12th rib you may open or you may cut 11th rib and in relation with this 11th rib there is presence of pleural sac therefore it may cause direct opening of this pleural sac now this is all about this applied anatomy of kidney today we have covered this supradrenal glands its gross anatomy its blood supply now supply applied anatomy of supradrenal gland and finally applied anatomy of kidney thank you